Sometimes I want to work with a two-dimensional function in Excel and display its values as a heat map. And this is possible on the Excel grid thanks to conditional formatting. Admittedly, it's not the highest performing or the highest resolution heat map that you'll find, but for simple applications, it can get the job done. And personally, I really like this trick. It's a lot of fun to do. So I want to show you how to do it in this video. So let's switch over to Wikipedia. And the function I'm going to be plotting in Excel today is this f of x, y equals uh, this expression here. And that is a two-dimensional Gaussian function. I'm going to hold a equals one, so that's one less thing we have to worry about. Uh, but everything else will stay the same. So what are we going to build? Um, first of all, uh, here in the upper left, we have some configurations for this um, uh, function that's over here in the right. So we have the mean, which is the x naught or y naught for the x and y axes. The standard deviation, which is the sigma for the x and y axes as well as the minimum and maximum bounds for each axis. Uh, down here in this column, I have indices for each value on the y-axis. And in this row, I have indices for each value on the x-axis. And then in this column, it's each value on the y-axis itself. And in this row, it's each value on the x-axis itself. And for each of these uh, um, row, uh, uh, cells here in this area, it uses this formula to calculate the value at that position, and the conditional form formatting takes care of the colors. So let's build this out. And I'm going to keep the, I'm going to call this sheet build, and I'm going to keep the formatting here to a minimum so that it's, uh, we can get done with it a bit quicker. So I'm going to have x-axis, y-axis, mean, sd, min max then I'm going to make just really quickly make these bold and so my means will be I'll hold it zero initially we'll play with that later SD's at one negative two negative two and two and two are good sensible defaults let me go grab the equation we're going to use. And there we are. So let's first define the y-axis. And uh, I'll use the sequence function to, to make the indices. And sequence is an array function, so it will take what we're doing and spill down the rows that we want. So I want 21 rows one column starting at zero in step size of one. And there we go, zero through 21. And what we need to do to get the actual values on the y-axis is a linear equation. So if you recall y equals mx plus b, we need to make our m first. So that's going to be parentheses. Um, this is the y-axis, so the max minus the min and I'm using F4 to just hold those cell references constant, divided by 20, 20 positions on the indexes, uh, times the index, plus B, which is the minimum on that axis. And so we get negative 2 there when we finish that, and then when we double-click to send it down, we see it goes from negative 2 to positive 2, and at even intervals. So that's handy. Now sequence can also go across columns. So sequence, one row, 21 columns, start at zero, increment by one, and there we have our, our zero through 20. And similar to what we did for the x-axis, we or the y-axis, uh, we can do this for the x-axis and uh, make the, the m term, so that's going to be the max f4 minus the min f4 divided by 20 times that value there plus the minimum again as our b and there we go now I'll just drag this across 
And now comes the fun part. We get to enter this as an Excel formula. So it's going to be equal to exp, open print, minus, now the way operator precedence works in uh, Excel formulas, we need another paren, and then we need yet another paren for the x minus x naught we're going to start with, and we can start specifying stuff now. So we're going to need x. Now we're going to need to, as we drag this formula down, this, this uh, row 11 is going to need to remain the same. So I'm going to do F4, F4, to simply fix g dollar sign 11 minus x naught, which is the mean of x. Square that, divided by 2, divided by the standard deviation on the x-axis, squared. I'm doing f4 because that should never move. And I did divided by 2, divided by the sd squared, and rather than put in uh, multiplication and then more parentheses. It makes, I think it makes our life just a little bit easier in this demo. So now we can do this for the y-axis. So y, um, we have now very similar to g dollar sign 11, I'm going to need to have dollar sign f12. And why the other dollar sign here? And that's because I'm going to need to drag this across the columns and have it remain uh, the same position that it's obtaining that value from. So minus, why not? Now divide, uh, oops, square it. Divided by two, divided by this squared. Now I can close that parenthesis, that parenthesis, and we have our value right there. So that's good to see. Now we can just drag it across and drag it down, or I just double clicked, whichever you want. So we can see that we have our range of values. We have one in the middle here and we have uh, our 0 0.018. And I'm going to, well, first thing we can notice is that this heat map is really rectangular. We want it to be closer to this aspect ratio here. So the first, so the next thing we need to do is select all these cells, format them as numbers, and that instantly adds a bunch of white space, which then we can get rid of by double clicking on the columns. And in case this looks boring for you, um, it's boring for me too, um, but We'll get through it here in just a moment. And if you hear fan noise, uh, it's because this computer and I have, this is like take number six, and uh, we've been working hard to get this screencast made. Almost there, all right. So now the last thing to do is add our colors to the axis, or our colors to the cells. With conditional formatting, do color scales, and I'm going to have it start at red and go to blue with the mid-range of white. So there is our heat map. Um, let's just check uh, to make sure everything works. This is always the scary part of a demo. Ooh, look at that. So I shifted uh, the x-axis by one. Let's shift the y-axis by negative one. Ah. That's awesome. Uh, 0.5 for the standard deviation, that squishes it. And if I were to say do negative six to two, that just kind of shifts um, the actual heat map. So there you go. Um, by making the ind indices for the axes uh, with sequence, defining the actual values for each axis as uh, a linear equation that allows full configurability of what's in this heat map by just modifying these eight numbers here. So I hope that you've enjoyed that heat map in Excel and uh, thanks for watching.